Hey, Matt, how you doing today? Very good, Chris. Thanks for having me on. Very happy to be here. Oh, epic. We're, we're, we're so psyched to have you on, folks. I mean, Matt is an epic guy, as you, as you should come to expect from guests on Expert Showcase. He's an epic guy. Um, he's all about assisting people with, with podcasts. And, and the reason I wanted to get him on the show today is because you as experts, you know, you as watching coaches and, and authors and speakers watching our show. Um, if you aren't in podcasting, you probably will be. And if you are, you probably know how, how much time and, and what a struggle it is to get a lot of stuff done on the back end. Well, Matt is an expert in this particular field. He's an epic expert in this particular field. Um, if you're brand new to podcasting, you definitely got to stick around. He's going to give you some great information on what you need to look out for. And if you're experienced in podcasting, you definitely need to stick around because what he's going to tell you in the second half is going to resonate with you and you're going to realize why you know you might uh, need some help and might need somebody to, to take the load off, uh, if you will, in, uh, in some of these cases. But before we get to that, Matt, as we do with every guest, we want to get into your hero's journey. Our audience loves to hear about the beginning, the turning point, and the aftermath of all of our guests. So just give us a quick summary of your hero's journey. What led you from where you are, where you were before, to where you are now? Well, uh, Chris, I'm coming from the uh, corporate world, actually. I was in sales and marketing for for a number of years, and about uh, about a year ago now, I got to see my uh, twin brother has a daily podcast for coaches, and and I got to see that was kind of my introduction to podcasting. I listened to a few of of other subjects and started to learn a bit about it, and then I actually said, "Whoa, my brother's." starting up his own show and I could see him constructing his sound booth and can see him working away on editing software so I was kind of watching from a distance but uh, for uh, as long as I can remember I've been into personal development and kind of checking out what some coaches are doing and seeing what my brother is doing with his own business so this is something that was kind of floating around saying I wish I could be involved but uh, other than days like today I'm usually not really in front of the scene so I see see my brother doing this but I also got to see how many hours he was spending on on his podcast, and it was his baby, but oof, his baby was taking him uh, a lot every day. I mean, we'll talk a little bit further about the amount of tasks involved, but uh, I just knew that I had to be, uh, I think, part of, uh, get, get into this podcasting, and I've seen it go on the rise. I read some articles, so it really didn't come to a head till probably uh, earlier in 2015 uh, with my job. I'd seen a uh, couple of uh, rounds of layoffs. I had survived them, but I could could definitely uh, go with my intuition, see that there's some changes in the industry that I was in, say, you know, in the sales industry. And uh, yeah, one day my brother mentioned he was looking to hire out, and I said, "Hey, let me uh, play around the software and do, you know, thinking I might do it on the side and gradually work into doing it full time." So I started doing his daily show, and and then. Uh, Lo and behold, he started kind of getting some people saying, you know, hey, who does your podcast? Or, you know, and, and the referral thing happened, and a couple other people said they'd sign on. And I've always been kind of an all in guy. I said, you know what, I'm going to uh, go with my gut. I want to jump onto this podcasting wave, and this is a good way to do it. So I decided to start my company and do it uh, full time. And that's a little bit about my hero's journey. I, like I say, I get the get paid to do personal development all day long, which I'd be doing anyways on my breaks and in the mornings by reading. Now I get my personal development by listening to motivational content from, uh, well, from content uh, providers, you know, uh, across the globe. So that's a little bit about my journey. Man, Matt, that is epic. And for those of you who might remember the last name of Winnie, yeah, we had his brother on the show back many, many moons ago. We're gonna have to get your brother back on here again and and, and get a follow up because he because he also was such an epic guest. So actually, we should get you both on the screen, and then I'll just <laughs> I'll flip flop your names all day long, and people will have a fun episode. time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Epic. So so let's dive deeper. First, let's start. So let's start off with the beginning because it's interesting to me that you were. Um, we talked offline, and you were fairly successful in the industry you were in. You, as you had just said to our audience, you just kind of said you just kind of saw the writing on the wall. Is, is that is that correct? I think you're right. I really enjoyed sales, and it was a uh, you know uh, financially was was good to me. Uh, that's why I why I enjoyed sales because you have the potential to to make more and get 
paid what you're what you're worth. But a change is in the industry. It's, it was a traditional industry. I appreciated the opportunity. But you know, when you just have a uh, kind of, I guess, an intuition or a gut, something was telling me, and, and part of it, I have to give uh, a credit to Gary Vaynerchuk's Crush It. Read that book, even though it's from 08, 09. You read that book, you want to get a brand going online and jump jump into the online world. So, you know, I've been uh, I'm pretty adaptable to change and thought, you know what, I might as well take a shot. But I had some great coworkers and a great great boss over at my other place, but I just knew it was time to, to jump and cut the cord and, and uh, get go out on my own. Yeah, epic. So um, was there something that, because I'm sure there's a lot of people like like you listening and, and watching to us at this point where they're successful and they're learning from you because they're here to hear from experts and they're starting to question going, well, wait a minute, things are successful for me. Um, should I start to change? Can you remember, was there anything during that phase that gave you a signal or um, you know, made you even start to consider something else? Uh, yeah, about a year ago, there wouldn't have even been the possibility that I would have left that job, which is, came about pretty quick, but uh, what happened, to be quite honest, was uh, significant changes to the compensation plan. Uh, I really, you know, if there's a, if, and that's, a, you know, I, I understand that in the corporate world, you're at the mercy of the of the corporation, they're trying to trying to make themselves as lean as possible. But when there's changes, and you know, I'm I'm pretty good at math. I could do the math, and when I could see the the changes coming, it probably would have been a hit to about 40% of my gross. Which at that point, I figured that's a kind of a catalyst to push me out. But no, I wasn't looking to change at all until until those uh, changes got announced, and that kind of gave me that push that I really I guess needed to look to do something do something different and I decided to hedge my bets on myself. Yeah, and it's interesting. You also talked about during the, um, you talked about uh, one of your comments was that you um, you were doing personal growth and personal development all day anyway and now you're, you're kind of getting kind of getting paid to do it. So when yeah. you were a success, one of the qualities of you being successful was to continue the continuing uh, continually investing in yourself and, and uh, continuing to grow and, and develop your, yourself, your skills personally and professionally, right? You're absolutely right. And that's something probably the last 10 years that I've done daily reading. And I think you've probably heard Think and Grow Rich a million times across your journeys, but that's a book that my you know my brother introduced to me, and there's some you know so many books I can't even really probably ref, you know uh, cut it down to a list of ten. But I mentioned Gary Vaynerchuk's. Uh, there's some great books on the best. I think the best book I could recommend to anyone is uh, Who Moved My Cheese by Spencer Johnson for yeah. a change. That after you read that book, it just shows that whether it's a job, whether it's uh, marriage or anything, uh, the cheese could move at any time, and you have to be ready to adapt. So I'm kind of like I said, I've been adaptable, and I've used uh, kind of you know personal development's been big for me. I've always been big into the gym, and I think health and and a positive. Uh, you know, positive thinking goes a long way, and, and I'll be the first to admit the last couple of months at my corporate job, I wasn't the same. I just, you know, when the changes were announced, I just was dragging myself in. I didn't have that zest, and when you lose that, then you know, I think it's time to, to make that make that move and time to move on. Yeah, and I think that's so interesting because really that's what leads us towards a turning point and leads us towards recognizing that there's a, you know, there's a turning point when we start to lose um, that zest and we start to lose that desire to to do what we're doing. It's kind of, you know, you, um, you're you still successful, um, but you kind of know or feel that something is is off or just just isn't, you know, just isn't right. Because, you know, for you, um, I, if I understand things correctly, you were always, you know, before that you were excited to go in. I mean, it was something that, that you enjoyed doing, something that you had fun doing, right? Yeah, I was in the office early every morning, uh, sometimes, you know, 7 o'clock, and, you know, I'm, I've always been the type I don't mind answering my phone at night or doing work to look after a client, I took a lot of pride in the work I did, And but I, with all experiences, I take it, uh, I really appreciate any experience I've ever had, because it's always led, or leads you right to the point you're at now, you know, who knows, maybe I'd be a different person without the sales experiences that I learned in my last position, or, you know, all, the whole way through, I guess you are, you're always picking up different things that that uh, help you develop, and and I think it's important. Uh, 
I, one quote that always stuck with me, and I don't know if this is word for word, but Jack Canfield's uh, Everything You've Ever Wanted is on the other other side of fear, I think, is how it goes. And I always thought about that. Fear is almost this wall. If you can just somehow look over it, look around it, whatever, make the leap, and you'll always you'll land on your feet. You know, I haven't starved yet. I've, uh, you know, uh, I, you know, you gotta I, I take life not so serious. And going back to the Who Moved My Cheese book, you have to look at uh, life is always changing, and yet you, you do have to be able to adapt. Yeah, I mean, life is going to change whether we like it or not, and things are going to change around us whether we like it or not. And like you said, you, know, you have to, you have to adapt. So before we get into and really dig into the turnaround, because what, we, what I'd like to do um, in a moment is dig into that turnaround and go through some of the feelings and some of the, the things you started to do and some of the actions you took and kind of, you know, how you prepared yourself for success. Um, it, from the beginning, was there any... Um, is there any big moment or aha or anything um, that comes to you from from your time um, before your turnaround that you um, that you'd want to share with the audience? I think looking back at it now, I remember when uh, when those changes were announced by the corporation, you feel a little bit resentful. And I, th I think the biggest thing to remember now, looking back on it, is to say, "Hey, look, uh, everything does happen for a reason." So. It just goes back to being adaptable, but be ready to to change. And and I think that aha moment was, you know what? I'm I'm nobody owes me a living for the rest, a good living for the rest of my life. And if you're going to rely on other other people or companies, then you have to expect that some changes are going to happen. And I don't want to knock the nine to five because I I've done it for a number of years after university. But I think just for myself personally, I, I realized that I wanted to strike out on my own. It was this something that was always kind of there, but then there's always that fear, uh oh, I'm not going to get my paycheck every two weeks and things like that. You really, and it's not for everybody. I wouldn't recommend entrepreneurship sometimes for the faint of heart, but I think. If, uh, if you're willing to work and you're willing to keep a, a positive attitude and treat people right, things will, things will work out well. So I, I think the aha moment really is just what we've been talking about. I think realizing like when I, when, you know, that, you know what, nobody owes me anything and you know what, they, you know, I, I did, I enjoyed the position for a couple of years, but things are kind of constantly changing and whatever's move forces are moving, they've pushed me to kind of get into podcasting and get, you know, uh, get into something that's a really, really cool industry and a niche and something that, as you know, that's on the, on the, uh, the up, uh, up, uh, upwards trend now. And I th thought now was a good time to get on kind of on the wave. And who knows, maybe I'll start up my own show it's, uh, someday. But uh, it's, it's addictive just listening to it and seeing what people are doing. It really is. Yeah, definitely. And it's interesting because that leads us into, of course, the turning point and how you handled it. You know, we really heard that that turning point and that seminal moment, I think, came. It sounds like it came when, um, you know, when you figured out. It wasn't really the first moment when they announced everything. It was kind of, you know, you. it's almost like kind of you hear the news announcement and then you go back and you, and you actually dig deeper into it and go, yeah, I best start changing like quick. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so you got this announcement, and, and I'm quite sure a lot of our viewers are going through this where they've heard something changing at their company or they heard something is going to happen. For you, when you heard this change was coming, do you remember the first thing you went and did after, after uh, you heard about, the ch the, heard about the change initially? Yeah, I grabbed my calculator and I saw what was going to happen to my pay and felt like I was on the Titanic and I wasn't going to sit around and listen to the guy playing the violin. I was going to try to find a life raft and, you know, everyone has choices to make, but I just knew that uh, for me personally in my situation, I had to had to make the move. So the first thing literally that I did was grab my calculator, get my head wrapped around this new compensation plan and in fairness, most corporations aren't going to make a change to a, a compensation plan for sales and marketing to give them more money and the company less. You know, it's they may be spun that way, but that's not what happens. Uh, but what I did was uh, afterwards, I, I'm lucky. I have a very uh, supportive girlfriend, and she's behind me 100%. And talked to her that evening. It was pretty quick when I made the final decision, and it was the next day. I had a great boss there. He was a uh, he was a one, and and you know sat down, talked to him. But I knew I was you know done, and 
and uh, pass my you know notice in. But I, I guess I should say it took probably three or four days because I you know I talked to my brother and and kind of got my head wrapped around podcasting as well. So uh, that's kind of I guess uh, kind of how it happened. So I think there's a lot of gold in there. So first, forget about the situation, folks. First, Matt went out and figured out how a change was going to affect him. I mean, so many times, and Matt, you know, you hear a lot of personal growth and development coaches, you know, a lot of coaches that you're doing that you're doing shows for and editing shows for. I'm quite sure that a lot of them have the stories of their clients who sit around and either fail because of analysis paralysis or fail because they stick their head in the sand or fail because of, you know, a hundred other different reasons. Um, and, and not taking action is probably the big thing. So, um, you know, so the first thing you did was you took action. You said, how is this change going to affect me? Because let's face it, it may have affected you seriously, which it did. But, you know, other changes for other people might not affect them so seriously. So then when you found that it was going to affect you seriously, I love what you did next. Good conversations with people with people close to you. Um, let's touch on that real quick because I know you have a supportive brother and you talked about your girlfriend being very supportive. Um, tell us a little bit more. Like when you approach them, you know, how, how, you know, how did you approach the conversation and, you know, did they give you advice or, or kind of what happened there? Well, you know, my brother, he's a serial entrepreneur. He, he's the definition of entrepreneur, but it's very motivating to get to see that. And you, you know, we're twins, so we shared a womb. I don't know if that rubbed off on me early on. So, you know, uh, him, he's gonna ninety-nine, well, hundred times out of a hundred, he'll tell you to go for it and go for your dreams. And then on the uh, flip side, my girlfriend was uh, kind of going through a similar change where she was in a uh, uh, working for someone else, but also planning to uh, open up her own uh, business, which just actually opened this week. So. I'm kind of lucky that way, where my the two people are the two people that are the closest to me are both entrepreneurs who uh, understand what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur. Uh, my girlfriend doesn't mind if I'm on my laptop, you know, till 11, 12 o'clock at night because I'm, you know, need to get something uh, in for the next day. It's it's really takes a special special breed of, of people, as you know, for entrepreneurs, and it's not for everyone. I, I guess going back to my I should have mentioned back to my co coworkers, like, uh, and the reason a lot of them are still there too is because um, I'm in a different situation. I don't have children and and things like that. So you know, there's still benefits that they would have to, you know, that obviously could, you know, be a, you know, help them out in their situation. And so for me, I can a choice really affects me. But everyone's got to look at their own personal situation and whether it be, you know staying in uh, a job that you're in or trying on your own I guess it's it's not a decision to take lightly but at the same time I think you're right you have to if you know it's the time to jump jump and and you'll figure things out on the way down so yeah well and the other key is that you had support you know you had support around you and the decision you made was the best for yourself and for your and for your current situation um, then the third thing, after finding you had that support, I did find it interesting. You said you didn't go in and quit right away, but or I said you didn't go in and give your notice right away, but you started doing some research. So for you, it was on podcasting, but in general, you know, it sounds like another good step is to, even though you trust that things are going to work out okay, it's like verify and start to do a little bit of re a little bit of research um, to make sure that what you think might work at least has a has a chance. I mean, is that is, is that we did, or did you dig deeper yeah. in your research? Or no, I'll be uh, completely honest with you. Uh, my first thought was I was in outside sales territory management. My first thought was to look into sell a product for a different company and and see. But looking at the job market, I felt for me that uh, that it wasn't quite what it would have been even say eight nine years ago. So for me, I looked and I said it was almost. That was everything was pushing me towards doing this. Like if there was a ton of high-paying jobs locally, that I think it would be tempting. And I've been contacted since I actually since I've been uh, started up the company about uh, some interviews and some people through different like LinkedIn. And I just had to say no. I'm I'm in this. Uh, I started something up, and I'm I'm in this for the the long haul. Uh, so I think it was it wasn't that I just said okay I'm going to quit and I believe in podcasting. There's a little bit of a you know, doing research for a couple of days and then saying, well, I don't feel the job market's where it's at and I think I want to get on something that's 
trending upwards and I'm gonna you know the world's changing the industrial you here at the industrial age and now we're you've probably seen so many changes the last uh, well really since social media online businesses there's a world of opportunity out there and I think uh, people are selling themselves short if they think they have to do a traditional traditional job and not explore non-traditional things of course my parents and and such are are uh, old school they probably think my brother and I are nuts but you know <laughs> It's, uh, you know, and it, go, it all goes down to what you're putting in your head if you're listening to podcasts that are motivational and people that are out there doing it and you're reading about the Gary Vaynerchucks and, you know, and you're filling your head with Napoleon Hill, then it's pretty hard not to take a bet on yourself for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I tell you, I, I uh, you know, as our audience knows, you know, I got divorced uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, she says it's a couple of years now. Amazing how time flies. But you know, I know my ex-wife and, he, and her family were in the in the old mode, you know, because it was kind of like, look, she, yeah, eventually got to the point, look, shut the business down and get a real job. And you know, the the funny part is, anytime somebody who's not an entrepreneur or who doesn't realize what we do and what we go through says their real job, it's like it kind of makes me. Kind of makes me twitch and cringe because you know um, I, I don't know what can be more real than you know end up you know end up working 80 90 hours a week or, or you know or what have you or, or working you know at all hours of the day or night just because it's not in an office or just because it's not in a factory doesn't mean it's you know not uh, challenging great, so great point you know it's interesting because that really leads to that really leads us now into the aftermath which um, you know, you got this, you know, to, to kind of recap, if our users are just joined, if our viewers, users, we have users, man, we, I'm not even going to go down there, but <laughs> yeah, if you're a viewer of this show, you're a user. No, I'm not, not just off the rails. Let's do, we'll rein it back in our viewers. If you're, if our viewers have just joined us, you know, we've gone through so far how Matt was very successful, um, in a different industry, realized that there was change, a change at the, at the job he had there. Um, as us people in the industry like to say, the just overbroke job that, that he had there, um, and realized that he could do something else with the passion and with some stuff that he was already doing just because he, he loved it. Um, but then he took the steps. He went out and, uh, you know, realized how this change was going to affect him. He had conversations with people close to him, and then he did the research to figure out exactly if this was a viable. Um, if this was something that was that was viable, and he found that it was. So then we get to the aftermath, which is where he's at now, which is successfully helping podcasters really, um, you know, streamline their 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 shows and everything. At least that's the way I'll describe it. Matt can describe it for you differently later. Um, so after so after the turning point, I'm sure it wasn't all ro- uh, you know, as we like to joke around, roses, daisies, and you know, ponies with rainbows at first. Um, to start making this happen, what did you start to do? Sure. Well, I you're absolutely right. You don't just uh, quit a quit a job and then start up a company and have zero startup cost and have a full roster of clients and uh, only work two days a week and spend the rest of the time on the beach. There's that transition time, and I I had banked on, you know, four four or five months to make the you know make the transition. And no, things are they're it's growing at a good pace. You know, uh, I can't say. You know, I'm doing everything myself, so it's it's kind of a nice way to do it, grow it organically. Uh, all of my businesses really come from referrals, and you know, I've I've my Facebook list has doubled just in the last uh, couple months, and it's been mostly due to c- connecting with people like yourself and people in the in you know the motivational industries and podcasters. And uh, yeah, it's it's growing at a good pace. I'm I'm really happy with the clients that I'm working with. They're people that I enjoy working with. They have really good content, and they're all really different, which is which is good. I mean, not not to knock my brother's show, but if I was doing just his content, you know, uh, nonstop, I would, uh, you know, you like to have it changed up a bit. So <laughs> I've got clients that are female hosts, clients that are male hosts, some that are in uh, business, some that are in relationship podcast and it's it's at a really good pace because it's not so overwhelming that I lose uh, lose a handle on the quality I can keep uh, you know I'm a pretty I'm a disciplined guy I'm very you know scheduled I, I keep on top of things um, I have a backup that can help me out if I ever do you know get a t- pick up a big job and need the, need the help so it's uh, I can't say enough of, of uh, the first you know it's it was just earlier this year really you know within the last you know four months that I've been doing this full time so yeah, I'm but very happy. Epic, and I think our audience though can tell. You know, even from 
the turning point. If you didn't, if you didn't watch it, you got to go back and watch it. Even from just the turning point, the fact most people would have taken a week just to figure out if the change would affect them. I mean, you know, you took an hour. Oh, no. I mean, it was it was almost immediate. But but that to me seems like your personality and what's making you successful. You know, so you take action. You look at something and you take action right away and you go, okay, what do, what do I got to do? So within three or four days, you would accomplish something that most people probably would have waited a month to and by the time they were done, might have been too late. Um, so the other, the, the other thing I find interesting is you're building the business, I say the right way, which is you're building it organically, but you know, you're creating what we like to call minimum viable product. You went out and you tested first to see if that, if this was, if this was even going to fly, um, before taking on thousands and thousands of clients. So let me ask you this, was that a conscious decision where you said, look, I want to make sure the quality is good. I want to make sure I get the procedure down. I want to make sure all this works right before I bring on too many clients and before I hire people on upscale. Um, was that a conscious decision or was it something that just came naturally to you or was it something that you just kind of stumbled into? Which, which, which is it? A little bit of both. I think you're right. It's uh, you only get one chance when you're starting out a company and you know, my marketing uh, budget isn't, um, thousands and thousands of dollars a month, you know, eventually, you know, maybe I can try some other things, but I, I really, right, right out of the gate, uh, the biggest thing was connecting with people and just letting people know what I, what I could do and let the pieces fall in where they, they may. And uh, yeah, I mean, having, you know, a good source of business from different people referring me definitely helped out, but uh, it wasn't, you know, I mean, just to introduce myself and I probably had 150 Skype calls, you know, just to, like with yourself, you know, in the first, I'm going to say in the first two months, uh, maybe month and a half, like it was quite a bit, or Facebook conversations, and uh, just to kind of at least get get my name out there, and if anyone ever needs a hand, you know, they know, they know who I am, and I'm not a overly pushy, you know, sales guy, I'd like to, you know, but if people know, know what I do and see that I can do good work, then if uh, they're ever stuck and, you know, they know where to where to turn, but really, uh, I would like to say, you know, I think everybody would love to have uh, starting out ten thousand dollars a month to throw into to marketing and really get out there and get into the funnels and all that. But I just didn't have, uh, you know, for me, I, I didn't have that sort of money behind me, and and uh, it was a matter of really just necessity. I would think uh, is how it how it grew and how it's been growing. Yeah, that is that's that is epic, and I, and I love how you said you had 150 calls within you know the first month and a half. Now, folks, I get it. Matt, you know, used to do sales, and and it's e it's quote unquote easier for him to make those calls. And believe me, I've been on the I've been on both sides, and I you know I despise cold calling and everything. Um, if you're like that, then you have to find a way to generate that business, whether it's Facebook, whether it's LinkedIn, something where maybe you're not picking up the phone, but you're generating that, that, uh, that interest because, you know, the worst thing you can do is leave a job for, you know, for a, um, and create a business that will only ever make $5 a month. You know, that's kind of the worst thing because then you left something safe and you went to, you know, you went to something that is, is surely going to fail. And how do you know if it's only going to make five dollars a month? You create a product, you get your name out there and you see what you see, what a, you see, what response there is. I mean, if you're taking one hundred and fifty calls in the span of about six weeks, I would think there's some need for that particular product. I mean, that's a you know, that to me sounds like a good validation that um, that there was a need out there. Um does yeah, that for sure yeah no you're, you're right I mean uh, I think having you know people referring me that's that was a, a good a good start because you know I have my brother as a client and then he had he has a, a podcasting course so a few people that are starting out you know was able to help them out so it wasn't all cold calls I guess it'd be uh, warm inter introductions but uh, you know a lot of people are maybe even just kicking around the idea and they may start up a show a year down the road or maybe they start up a show and they need somebody just to do a part of something that they really don't like doing show notes or something like that or maybe they just have a question about the editing software and at least you know I can help them out that way or or promote their products as well I, I uh, like I say I'm not all I don't want to just sell 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 I like uh, doing what I can sharing around for people and 
I think this sort of industry, podcasting, coaching, it's a real, I, now I might be jinxing myself, I haven't met a bad, I was talking to somebody about this the other day, or he mentioned it to me, he's never met a mean podcaster or coach, like everybody's, they'll jump to help you, so I think that makes it a lot easier if you're selling a product that's, you know, I don't want to single out any industries, but it's if it's a bit of a tough sell, I think there's a little bit more uh, call a, uh, apprehension to make that call. But for what I'm doing, I get to, to listen into someone's show and then give them a call and say, hey, you know, I liked your episode or, you know, something like that. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a neat industry that way. It's very, very positive from what I've seen and it goes well, uh, goes well if you're trying to to uh, sell a product or a service. So. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, Matt, you've had an incredible hero's journey. We're going to wrap up the, the hero's journey piece of our episode today. We're going to take a 60 second break. And when we come back, we're going to, we're going to dive right into the expert focus segment. And for those of you new podcasters, Matt's going to give you some tips and tricks and, and uh, let you understand what you're in for. And for those experienced podcasters through the, the information Matt's going to share, you're going to realize he understands you, he gets you, and he's on your side, and he's the one that you should be having help you um, save time, save your time and energy. So give us about 60 seconds, and we'll be right back. To watch the rest of this epic episode now, click on the link below the video. Do it now. You'll be glad you did. Are you still here? What are you waiting for? Watch the rest of this epic episode now by clicking on the link below the video.